Welcome to Fish Eater Friday. We're continuing answering a question about why I say traditionalists are not Catholic. And I'm going to give you a quote from an interesting book called The Smoke of Satan. <coughs> it has a whole chapter on traditionalists. I'd like to see someone write a whole book on traditionalists. And if anyone wants to write that book, you come across this video, get a hold of me. I'll tell you some things that you haven't heard. Because, let's face it, I don't know where the bodies are buried in some of these cases. And I've been making some videos about some of these things. Because I think the truth needs to come out. But go, if you want to, get the smoke of Satan and read the chapter about traditionalists. I can't confirm the actual stories in there. But I know some of the people and the stories are at least in character. And the author interviewed Bishop Daniel Dolan. And I'd like to give the whole quote because this is a very important quote. Some claim I left the Society of St. Pius V simply because I wanted to become a bishop at any price. But this is preposterous. The main reason I left was because of personal conflicts with Father Kelly. He exercised a strong cult-like leadership. He was a bit of a Francis Schuchert type, very charismatic and manipulative. Not having a bishop in the society made the situation especially taxing. But I certainly wasn't looking to better myself by becoming a bishop. Bishop Piverunas approached me first with the idea. And at first I had serious reservations about the archbishop took an old Catholic background of the Mount St. Michael's community. I don't deny that there have been problems here, but we're not living today under normal circumstances. We're faced with a vacuum of authority. The papacy has been vacant for more than 20 years now, and desperate times call for desperate measures. Our people need to receive the sacraments, and for this they need priests, and it takes bishops to make priests. And this is precisely the role that Bishop Piverunas and myself play. We don't claim to possess any ordination, ordinary jurisdiction or the power of excommunication. We have moral authority, but we don't boss people around. We are sacramental bishops, and traditionalist communities simply can't survive for very long without sacramental bishops. And the old Catholics found the same thing out. You don't get anywhere without a bishop, because you need a bishop to perpetuate the community. That's why Sugar went and got himself ordained and consecrated. He wanted to have found a community. But this is the important point. We are sacramental bishops. Dolan's not the only one to say this. The Society of St. Pius X put out a media brochure after Antipope Benedict XVI remed the excommunication. You can find it online. Uh, sspx.org slash sspx space media space brochure dot pdf if they haven't moved it. <coughs> and I will quote. Three. Consecrating a bishop without a papal mandate would be a schismatic act if jurisdiction, that is, a territory to govern, was given by the, to the newly consecrated bishops. But Archbishop Lefebvre never did this. He made it clear that he was only consecrating sacramental bishops to perform such episcopal duties as administering confirmation and ordaining priests. And uh, I ran across a comment. It's no longer there because I went to look for it. Uh, let's see. The uh, Society of St. Pius X does not refuse Holy Communion to private Zetificantus either. Bishop Sanborn goes beyond his authority. Apparently he refuses communion to those who uh, believe that uh, now Francis uh, George Bergoglio is Pope. He is merely a sacramental bishop and priest. We've got the idea of sacramental bishops and priests. This is an absolute. This is an absolutely new idea. You will not find the term sacramental bishop or sacramental priest in a theology book uh, from the councils of the church. You may find one come from the pope someday when he condemns this proposition as heretical. That could happen. It's a new concept. Always. Not just Catholics, but the Orthodox and the Old Catholics. They, their bishops claim authority. 
You can see it in uh, the old Catholics and the uh, descendants of Bishop Duarte Costa. Those bishops, they all claim authority over some territory. Some have a real precise territory. Others will say like um, Kansas City. I am the bishop of Kansas City of the uh, uh, ancient old Roman Catholic Church, someone might say. They all have fancy titles to distinguish them from the uh, new old Roman Catholic Church down the street, which has now adopted the Novus Ordo. Okay, because uh, some of the old Catholics are now adopting the new rites of the sacraments from Vatican II. Many are keeping the old rites. In any case, their bishops claim authority over their priests and their faithful. They will set up parishes with a priest. You know, they call them jurisdictions. The traditionalists, they state straight out, both Society of St. Pius X, Bishop Dolan. We don't claim to possess any ordinary jurisdiction or the power of excommunication. Well, this is why I have to reject both you, uh, P Mr. Peverunus and Mr. Dolan. Because, yeah, you may be valid bishops, but you claim absolutely no authority. Therefore, I cannot really go to you. Because... The sacraments are, priests and bishops aren't mere sacramental machines. I, that has, that's been, that's wrong. Venerable Louis of Granada writes, Today, however, many priests think that nothing more is required of them than the administration of the sacraments and the celebration of Mass at specified times. And they content themselves with this. The church is hierarchical. The pope, the diocesan bishops underneath him, okay, who are either appointed directly by him or in a manner approved by him, as in the extraordinary case we discussed last week, or was it two weeks ago, in Russia and China, where the bishops had authority to appoint their own successors and consecrate them because they could not contact Rome. That's perfectly legitimate. The Pope can do this. And another Pope will eventually remove that when it is no longer necessary. Diocesan bishops, and then the diocesan bishops appoint your pastor of your church. You go to a Society of St. Pius the church or chapel, they might have pastor on the door. Some of Dolan's Places have pastor on the dorm. Some of the CMRI places use the term pastor. They use it illegitimately. And you should ask them and say, well, no, we're not really pastors. We're not your pastors. We haven't been appointed. Well, they haven't been appointed. They have no authority. Uh, and they should not preach because it requires authority for the diocesan bishop to preach within the diocese. Without that authority, their preaching is illegitimate. Then we come to a more serious problem, the Sacrament of Confession. The Council of Trent declares that jurisdiction is required by divine law to validly absolve from sins and confession. A sacramental priest has no jurisdiction. He has said that. I mean, it's not. I'm not saying it of them. They now themselves are saying, we have no jurisdiction over you. Now, they're declaring an emergency. That's what uh, Dolan did. Uh, he has declared emergency. Uh, let's see. We're faced with a vacuum of authority. The papacy has been vacant for more than 20 years. And desperate times call for desperate measures. Our people need to receive the sacraments. For this, they need priests, and it takes bishops to make priests. No. The people don't need priests, they need pastors. The pastor is a priest, but not any priest can suffice. They need pastors. And this is the, what we were discussing last week about traditionalism. They're not seeking to solve the problem. That is, elect a pope who will appoint the diocesan bishop, who in turn will appoint pastors. Instead, they're setting up their own, quote, jurisdiction, just like the old Catholics, only they don't call it that. And uh, Dolan 
Bishop Dolan says he doesn't claim authority. Well, when he and Father Ramola went around, I read one of those letters and said, hmm, you're really uh, throwing your weight around for says you don't claim authority because he was pouncing on Ramola pretty hard. But sacramental priests and sacramental bishops is not traditional. Traditionalists are not holding to tradition because tradition is Pope, diocesan bishop, pastor. That's who the average Catholic is subject to. Missionary areas run with a slightly different organization, but it's still underneath a living, breathing pope. You know, how many years are we into a vacancy now? Like 55, 56 years, according to the state of Acontis, and they're not working to end it. Heck, they're fighting amongst each other. Because Dolan will have a priest in here. Uh, Peruse will have a priest in here. There'll be an independent state of Acontis priest in here, all in the same town. And so, that, these are the two reasons. They're not seeking a solution from the Pope, and they have set up a new type of priest and bishop, never before seen in church history, called a sacramental priest and a sacramental bishop, whose mission is simply to multiply sacraments. Uh, and if you take it to its logical conclusion, if a man goes to any one of these sacramental bishops and asks for ordination, that bishop's got to ordain him. I don't care how unqualified he is because he has no authority to judge. The second he makes a judgment, he's stepping out of being a sacramental bishop and claiming by his actions authority in the church, which he does not have and he himself admits. And you can look elsewhere. The Society of St. Pius X, these are CMRI, whatever, they admit we don't have ordinary authority. They're claiming an emergency authority. Why not end the emergency? That's what we did in 1990. We wanted to end the emergency and restore order. It's time for the traditionalists to convert and return to the Catholic Church and throw out the sacramental bishop and sacramental priest garbage. And so I leave you with another Fish Eater Friday. Enjoy your fish today. Soon we'll be eating a lot more fish and a lot less meat because Lent's coming up. God bless you all.